stage right now, Sean Patton, everybody! Do you ever worry what kind of hobo you'd be if you just lost your shit right now? You just snapped right now. Does that not cross everyone's mind 12 times a day? Like, how, whatever mental state you're currently in, like, ah, you know, and then you're just homeless forever. And, Cause like New York's where you come to make it, you know, as a musician, as an actor, as a fucking comedian. I'm starting to think as a homeless person. Like I try and help every homeless person I see, I give them money, but sometimes I wanna ask, hey, were you just the most homeless guy in Cleveland? <laughs> or like Phoenix? And your other homeless friends were like, man, you gotta go, you're too good. <laughs> I think about that every day. Okay, so I'm, I'm here in New York, I'm in Brooklyn, and I'm waiting across the street, and there's a woman in front of me jogging in place, right? Now, let's just call her clothing aerodynamic. Let's just call it that. Now, did I want to look at her perfect runner's body? Of course I did. I'm a fucking heterosexual American male, all right? Red blood, blue eyes, white piss. Of course I wanted to look. <laughs> I did. I did not look. That is not the time we are in anymore. There's no more room for that in life. We cannot objectify women, even if it's just on the street. Plus, there was no way of knowing whether or not I was on one of those hidden camera shows. There's no way of knowing. I could have been on, catch him looking. I could have been on that show. If that show exists, so there, I just didn't risk it. So I looked away, I looked away, I looked down the block, and what I saw was this homeless dude coming at us, and he was one of those like, I'm a get budget. You got a wolf jack man, shit, come on, the band. Get the fuck, shit, hot, don't get hot. Jack, a storyteller. That's what I call that style of hobo. A storyteller. I'm gonna get the man, so hot. Man, go hot. So, <laughs> I simply backed away and gave him an avenue to pass. And, but he stopped and he looked directly at this jogger's ass and went from, hot, get back to, ho. Oh. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I'm so glad she had headphones on. Otherwise, she would have heard him and turned around and go, oh, ho, oh, oh. And then he looked back at me, and I was just like, I'm, nope, I don't want any part of this at all. And then he continued, oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. And then the light changed. She jogged away. As soon as she was gone from his eyesight, he was right back to, Jim, it's come on, man. That's fine, dude. <laughs> Apparently, her ass was so great, it granted him sanity <laughs> again. If only for a moment. But that's what got me thinking, like, what happened? Like, something has to happen. Crazy homeless people aren't born crazy and homeless, right? <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of things I don't know. Maybe some of you have had that conversation. Like, oh my God, have you heard about Terry and Rita's baby? <laughs> It's homeless. <laughs> what are you talking about? She's a doctor and he's a attorney. I know, it's, it's a tragedy. It's a screamer too. If you live in New York, you've seen the screamer. That's the gentleman who just appears normal and then out of nowhere, <laughs> Like what happened to that guy? He probably wasn't always, at some point, he was probably, hey, hey, hey. And then someone told him, poor people always have to pay taxes, but churches never do. And he was like, what? And he just never stopped. I worry, like the storyteller, was he just a guy on a smoke break from work? Like, this is bullshit, you know? I'm working 60 hour weeks. I'm the first one here, last one to leave, you know? Pouring my lifeblood in this company. But I'm not getting promoted. I'm getting passed over every year because I'm not young, because I don't have a social media presence. This is bullshit. If I walked away now, this company be fucked. They don't know what they put. Fuck, 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 fuck. Man, shut up, fuck. Got to get Fuck, got to look, fuck. I just kept walking. That's why I love this city, though. I think a lot of people, I mean, almost nine million people live here because it's so affordable, I think that's why. <laughs> Isn't it funny when people ask you, like, how much, how expensive is New York, really? I, I tell this tale because it's true. Earlier this year, I helped my friend move into an apartment here in Brooklyn, one-bedroom apartment. He pays 3,000 a month. 
That, and the, the laughter you just heard is whoever lives here. They're like, that's it? <laughs> but seriously, three grand a month is what he pays for a standard one bedroom, nothing special about it. And I helped him move in in January. And then we were hanging out on the stoops afterwards, drinking kombucha <laughs> and pretending to like it. You know, standard Brooklynite activity. It's like, oh, this is delicious. What is that, bacteria? Mm, it's so good. It's so, mm, mm, mm. I can feel it wiggling down my windpipe. It's so good. This tastes like a bottle of vinegar went out, got hammered on PBR, and then pissed into this bottle. And it's so delicious and good for you. Why would I want Gatorade with all that sugar? No, this is mm, uh, bacteria. <laughs> We're doing that. And this old timey New Yorker, and I love those guys, like dirty work pants, dirty boots, though he'd probably been retired for 30 years. He's got a hat on, it's so old, I can't tell if it's Yankees or Mets, it's just NY. And he's just an old guy, and he's got something in a bottle, in a bag, probably booze, old school. And he stops right in front of the apartment, and he's just kind of staring at it for a second. And then he says, I used to live here, back in the 70s, right here. And then my friend goes, I just moved in, sir. And then the guy looks at us like he didn't even realize we were there. He's like, oh, you? What are you, a couple trapeze artists? <laughs> a side note, I don't know if that's a derogatory term or not. <laughs> trapeze artists are pretty fucking buff, you know? They're pretty jacked. But we're just sitting there. And then he says, yeah, I used to live in apartment 3RR. And that's the apartment I just helped my friend move into. And he says, he's like, that's what I, I just moved in, 3RR. That's right, some apartments in Brooklyn have two R's like they wrote fantasy novels. So, okay. <laughs> you like that one? That was good, yeah, thank you. Then this old dude, he goes, yep, I paid 270 a month. And I'm looking at my friend like, don't say it, don't say it. But he's one of those friends who's proud of what he pays. He goes, well, sir, I pay three grand a month. And this old guy's reaction was worth every cent. It was right there, he just, what? You fucking dumb shit. This guy pays three grand a month. This guy pays three grand. And there's no one on the street. He's just shouting it to the trees and the fire hydrants. Three grand. What the fuck? It's still a one bedroom? It is? What the hell they put in that bedroom, huh? Who do you live with? The, sh the, f the fucking jets? And the sharks? You live with the jets and the sharks? You get, you get a private Broadway production every night for three grand a month? Huh? What the hell's in that bedroom? A fucking sauna? Huh? A rub and tug studio? Huh? You get a private chef? What do you got in there? A cobbler? Just fixing your shoes every day? For three grand a month? What the hell you got in there, huh? A university? Huh? You get a college degree when you move in? Three grand a month. What the hell you got in there for three grand? Another apartment? Huh? You got a tinier apartment inside that one bedroom apartment? that you get to rent out and you pay three grand for a one bedroom? What the hell's in that tiny apartment, huh? What do you got in there, Portugal? The whole damn country of Portugal lives in that apartment for three grand, huh? What the hell's in there, gluten? What do you got in there, gluten? Is that where gluten glows when you free it? It goes to a one bedroom inside a one bedroom? What the hell you got in there, science, huh? What the hell's in there, time machine? You got a time machine in there? You got a time machine in there, huh? <laughs> hey, if I pay to move in there, can I take that time machine back to Coney Island in 1983? So as I could tell Pauly I loved him like I should have done then, but couldn't because we was both union. <laughs> is, that, is that what's in there? A chance at true love? You want first and last up front, though? Nah, no, fuck that. <laughs> that is a strange place to leave you, I know. <laughs> but like life itself, it's just unexpected. <laughs> Thank you all, good night. People always ask, who's your biggest comic inspiration? I don't know that it is any specific comedian. I know Mr. Show is what made me want to be a comedian. I know that TV program is what made me love comedy and made me want to talk about that. It made me realize that I was fun because I was like, I, th I th really? I think of this ridiculous shit too, I love it.